Hi, and welcome to my trip to the Arctic. I'm currently on Fair Isle, and Fair Isle is the southernmost of the Shetland Island group, currently inhabited by about 55 human beings, and a zillion puffins, and a few sheep. Whilst there might only be 55 human beings here now, there's been human settlement here dating back to the Neolithic times, plus or minus 5,000 years. Reached its height probably in Viking days, when the Vikings kept getting blown offshore and ending up here on the way to God knows where they were going, probably the United States. Beat Christopher Columbus there by a few hundred years they did. So from here, we are going to the Orkneys, and then we're going up to Faroe, across the Arctic Circle, and then to Svalbard. So join me on my trip to the Arctic. This is Scarabray. Scarabray is a World Heritage Site dating back to the Neolithic times. Neolithic being the uh, New Stone Age. Just to give you some perspective, the time difference between New Stone Age and Middle Stone Age is 3,000 years. Uh, using that scale, we're in the same epoch as Jesus Christ today. 5,000 people lived around here, they say, in the New Stone Age, making it quite a remarkable settlement. These are some of the oldest human constructions in the world, dating back 5,000 years, older than the pyramids. This is the Ring of Brodgar, and the Ring of Brodgar, like its more famous cousin Stonehenge in southern England, it dates back to Neolithic times, and like Stonehenge, they're not exactly sure what it does, but the fact that a number of the stones line up with both of the solstices and both of the equinoxes, and line up directly with the V in a mountain range in the distance where the sun sets, leaves very strong evidence that in fact this is part of the old religions that have something to do with worshipping the sun. This is built by the same people that built Scarabray. The Orkney Islands were Norwegian territory for many, many years, and here in the capital, Kirkwell, Kirkwell derives from the Norse church overlooking a bay or church overlooking the water because the cathedral here started in about the 1150s was built by the Norwegians as part of the Norwegian church and the Orkneys only became part of Scottish territory in the 1400s when King James didn't pay a marriage debt. Even to modern day the strong connection with Norway is still shown here in the Orkneys by a couple of factors. One is direct flights to Bergen in Norway and the other is that the Orkney flag has a very, very strong resemblance to the Norwegian. And behind me here is uh, Thorshavn or Thors Harbour, which is the capital of the Faroe Islands. There are 20,000 people in Thorshavn and about 50,000 people in Faroe Islands totally. Self-governing, part of the Kingdom of Denmark, has been part of Denmark and self-governing since about 1948, but for a lot of its history it was Norwegian. But a treaty between the Norwegians and the Danish some time ago uh, gave Faroe Islands plus Greenland uh, and a couple of other little islands to Denmark. It is a tad cold and rugged in Faroe. Spectacular islands off in the distance. About 80% of the non-government related economy is connected with fishing, about 60% of that salmon farming and about 40% of that open ocean fishing. I mean, what else are you going to do? Good afternoon. Not that the time matters when you're above the Arctic Circle in summer because we have 24 hours of daylight. What's the Arctic Circle? The Arctic Circle is the point on the Earth where at the summer solstice, the, the sun doesn't set. So once you get north of the Arctic Circle in summer, you get 24 hour sunlight like we have now. Not that I can prove it to you, it's 10 past three in the afternoon. But we are here in the middle of the Arctic Ocean on Yan Mayan land. Now, Yan Mayan land is a tiny speck in the middle of the Arctic Ocean, technically speaking. It sits on the join between the North American Continental Plate and the Eurasian Continental Plate. And like in Iceland, it's slowly being torn apart. And as the plates are torn apart, more magma is coming from the center of the Earth and creating a brand new island, in this case, Yan Mayan land. It's only been around a million years or so. Now, because it sits on a hot spot, and as the Earth's crust moves, 
the island will get longer and thinner, fed by this volcano, the northernmost active volcano in the world, 2,277 meters high. Now, no one lives here. I mean, who would want to live here? Except a small detachment of Norwegian soldiers that are tracking birds, to which I say, good luck with that. Yan Mayan land itself was supposedly first discovered by a whole bunch of Irish monks around the year 500 when they were travelling across with some Viking warriors, not quite sure how voluntary that was, and they got blown off course and landed here. And I'm sure when they landed here and had no hope of survival and no hope of rescue, they looked up to the sky and said to God, thanks for sending us here. We really appreciate that. Anyway, Yan Mayan land, Arctic Ocean. So Andrew, what do you think of Yan Mayan land? Actually, Actually, I think it's pretty cool. Yeah, me too. Do you think people should come here on a summer holiday? <laughs> you got to be kidding. Yeah.